Well, hello there. I'm Kim Berry, editor of Food and Drink Business. Welcome to Play, our weekly news roundup, brought to you by GS1 Australia, the only authorised source for your barcodes. For 50 years, GS1 standards have powered business to trade seamlessly, efficiently and safely. Learn more about the next generation of barcodes at gs1au.org. In the news this week, Lion has acquired the other 50% of Four Pillars Gin to match the 50% it bought four years ago. Four Pillars, which turns 10 this year, will join Lion's Vanguard Luxury Brands Division, uh, uh, at, which will then form a new standalone spirits division called Four Corners Global Spirits. Lion CEO Sam Fisher summed it up nicely when he said it's not every day that you get to buy the world's best gin distillery. And that wasn't just hyperbole. Four Pillars has won the IWSC International Gin Producer of the Year Award twice, and last year received its inaugural Green Spirits Initiative Trophy for its sustainability achievements. Fisher said Lion sees premium spirits as a real opportunity for future growth. It's also a smart move when you consider the steady slide down the drink of choice list beer is currently taking. Roy Morgan's latest alcohol consumption report found that the slide started in 2005 and that the decline is more sustained than for any other alcohol. Less than one third of Australian adults would consume a beer in 12 months this, these days. On that report, Roy Morgan said we're still drinking more than we were pre-pandemic, but not as much as we did peak COVID. The category that currently sits at the top of the class is ready to drink beverages or RTDs. Our love of an RTD is unique compared to other countries and while there's a lot of talk around lower APV and more choice and fewer calories and so on, let's just accept that we're a pretty lazy bunch and we'd rather just open a can than faff around with a spirit and mixers. Okay, moving on. Costa Group is in takeover talks with the US private equity firm Payne Schwartz Partners after Payne put in a bid at the end of May. Two companies met, had a chat, agreed to give Payne a non-exclusive eight weeks to complete due diligence, and that an offer of $3.20 to $3.30 would probably do quite nicely. Four weeks later, Payne has offered $3.50 per share and says it already has approval from the Foreign Investment Review Board. But don't think this is a done deal. Costa hosed down speculation that a deal between the two would be reached quickly, so let's see where that stands mm, by the time you're watching this. In what I can only say gave me flashbacks to Freedom Foods Group circa 2020, Bubs Australia says it has five years worth of its Bubs Supreme formula stored in multiple warehouses due to the poor performance uh, in China. It's anticipating a 20 to $25 million non-cash impairment in May 2020, Freedom Foods, now Numi, which is working so hard to leave that legacy disaster behind it, announced a stock write down of $21 million, which quickly moved to almost 60, resulted in an ASIC investigation, multiple class actions, and basically a world of pain. Anyway, back to Bubs. The formula company said that its China distributors, AZ Global Affiliates, Alice Training, Trading and Willis Trading, also owe the company around five and a half million dollars. There's now a court action over that debt with a lot of, but the previous management said, going on. The review of the company's uh, China strategy was due to be completed at the end of June last week. So let's see what that delivers. What a time. Treasury Wines has entered a sale and leaseback agreement with Duxton Water for water licences encompassing just over 4,700 megalitres uh, for $39 million. These licences don't relate to the South Australian vineyards that Treasury announced uh, in early June that it was looking to sell. Now, there's a lovely story on Vegemite Turning 100 up on the website with Bega doing a remake of its original 1950s Happy Little Vegemites TV ad. The best part about this is the appearance of Trish Kavanagh, one of the original ads cast. She was seven years old when it was made and she was the child marching on the top of the Vegemite jar and then eating the Vegemite toast at the end. 
there's an interview with her on the website, which is quite frankly glorious. You must watch it. Also, more than 10,000 kids applied to be the Happy Little Vegemites of 2023, which ironically, they're probably not when they heard that they didn't get the part. Anyway, that will do for today. Uh, for these stories and a whole lot more, head to the website, foodanddrinkbusiness.com.au. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, thanks to GS1. And uh, with that, I'm Kim Berry, over and out.